In uh, this episode of the Internet of Things show, we will talk about custom vision AI models that will be running on a Raspberry Pi using Azure IT Edge. And uh, we have Emmanuel with us from the Azure IT team to talk about it. Hey, thanks for watching the IT show. Uh, today we'll talk about Azure IoT Edge, and uh, we have a cool demo about running custom vision uh, cognitive service onto IoT Edge, right? Right, exactly. And we have Emmanuel with us. Hey, Emmanuel, thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks. And uh, you came with my snack. There's an apple and a banana. <laughs> Don't eat them yet. <laughs> no, not yet. We need them for the demo. Uh, so this uh, has been built recently. We've been doing a bunch of announcements around IoT Edge. Um, recently on the IoT show, uh, we talked about what's new mm -hmm. in IoT Edge. One of the things that Chapalo talked about is custom vision support. So what is that? How is that new? How does that work? Uh, yes, so, uh, so I'll, I'll walk through like what is a custom vision. Okay. Uh, so it's an AI workload and so uh, it, it will also show us our, a couple of patterns uh, that are typical about AI applications okay. running on an edge device. Mm -hmm. And so the whole point of this demo is to show how we can run AI workloads on a tiny device at the edge okay. so that you can run your AI workloads even when you're offline okay. or, or avoid to send all your data to the cloud okay. to do all your processing locally. Okay. Um, also helpful when you need a low latency. Okay, so basically all the promises of running cloud workloads onto devices here, it's a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I'm curious to see how that works. That's a tiny device. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, the interesting thing is we're talking a lot about, hey, it's going to uh, help you uh, reduce you know, the, the, the bandwidth usage, there's privacy, there's uh, latency. Uh, another thing that we're not talking about is it allows embedded developers to leverage complex code and models and run them on devices directly as well, right? Yeah. Well, actually, that's one of the great things about custom vision. It's part of the Microsoft Cognitive Services family. Okay. And uh, what it means is that it's a pre-built AI model. So you don't need to be an AI expert or data scientist to okay. uh, know and develop this AI mm -hmm. model uh, yourself. Uh, a service does it for you. Okay. And so you'll, you can just use your regular developer uh, experience to build a full AI solution. Okay. Well, I want to see that. So what are the principles? Can you run us through? Yes. Uh, so today we'll be focusing uh, on the custom vision service, okay. right? Um, I'm running on this uh, Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. uh, running Azure IT Edge. And so the custom vision service enables you to do image classification. Mm -hmm. uh, so and, and I love it because it's, as I was saying, super simple to use. You don't mm -hmm. need to have any AI skills. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is upload some images. Okay. Label them like apple banana, mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> click on a train button. Okay. And then the service does all the hard work for you, mm -hmm. and you just need to evaluate the, the output and the outcome of this uh, uh, of the model and see okay. if you, if it's uh, the accuracy is good enough for you or if you need to add some more pictures. Okay. Um, so before we, yeah, so what can you do with an image classification algorithm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are lots of applications, especially in the IoT space. Yeah. Uh, just uh, a few of them here, uh, like th so in a smart city, you could uh, um, imagine like whenever you've got a network of cameras, mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, detect road traffic condition okay. uh, with an image classifier. Um, in a smart building, a smart airport, smart stadium, you mm -hmm. could estimate wait lines. Okay. Um, or you can help people find a parking spot. Okay, makes and, sense. And there are many, many more applications. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so before jumping into the demo, I just would like to go through the concepts um, okay. so that we really understand what's going on. Um, Remind the principles of IT yeah, Hub, IT Edge. like going through okay. all the, the principles. Let's do that. So I've got, yeah, uh, my IT Edge uh, device here, Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's plugged to a regular USB camera, nothing okay. special with it. Uh, and my Raspberry Pi is connected to my Azure IT Hub service in mm -hmm. the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then what I've done is I, I've developed uh, two custom modules, okay. one to read the frames of this uh, USB camera, okay. and another one to manage and, and control the display on my Raspberry Pi. OK, to display something to, to on display the, 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 the it, Yeah, it will display the output of my AI model. Okay. And obviously, the last one is a custom vision uh, model. Okay. Right. 
So capture the image, send that, route that to the, uh, to the um, to custom vision module, and then uh, this one will score, get the score out, and then display something on the screen in the other module. Yes, so exactly. That makes sense. And so in your developer workflow, so you write those, so you have those three modules, okay. and then you package them as Docker containers, mm -hmm. right? Then you push all those Docker containers into an, an Azure container registry okay. or another container registry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you write a deployment manifest mm -hmm. uh, that says uh, deploy those three modules. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you push this to your Azure IT Hub service that then pushes this deployment manifest uh, to your Edge devices okay. when you click on the deploy button. Right? Okay. So the Edge device is running the IT Edge runtime. That's the prerequisites, yes. right? And it's, it's hooked up to a specific instance of IT Hub. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so whenever the device receives this deployment manifest from the IT Hub service, mm -hmm. uh, it understands that it should go fetch those three containers. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. And and that's the workload that it will bring down from the cloud to the, to the local device. OK. Yeah. So that's the, the high level view. Now, zooming in a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So on this uh, local device here, uh, as we've said, we've got three modules. Okay. Uh, so a camera, an AI processing module, and a display module. Okay. Uh, and so uh, looking at the communication patterns uh, here between modules, mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, the first thing, obviously, is to get the frames from the camera. Okay. Right? So nothing special here, just uh, that the camera modules need to access the frames through uh, regular in inputs, outputs okay. uh, protocols. <coughs> but then you, you're dealing with images, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which are media files that can be a bit big. Um, okay. uh, but so whenever you're dealing with media files like audio images or mm -hmm. video, um, then the, the easiest to uh, transfer those files from one module to another yeah. is to use HTTP okay. or to use a, another like WebSocket mechanism Got if it. you want even improved performances. Yes. Right. Meaning you're not you're avoiding going through the IT Edge um, mes messaging mechanism that is actually super useful for telemetry, things like that, but not for big media files, right? Yes, exactly. It does. So the messaging system doesn't work well with large um, okay. media files. It's not right? designed for that. It's not designed for that, exactly. Uh, but so the inconvenience of having this uh, HTTP co communication is that you get a tight coupling between your two modules. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a messaging system, you get loosely coupled modules. Got so it. if one is down, then the other one still work. Yeah, got and it. the other advantages of messages is that you can broadcast. It's a one-to-many relationship. Mm -hmm. So one module can send a message, uh, in that case, a camera module. Okay. And then uh, like another module, like a display module, could receive it. But also the cloud could also receive it. OK, makes it, sense. Right? Makes sense. Um, yeah. So and so messaging. Um, so here, the messages that we'll be sending uh, will be the output of our AI model, okay. uh, which is typically just a, a small JSON blob yeah. with just the results of the processing. Okay. Right? I, an object has been detected or not. Okay. Yeah. Um, now about like processing patterns. So mm -hmm. for a typical AI application, you would see like a pre-processing step. Mm -hmm. a processing step, the main AI model, okay. and a post-processing step. Mm -hmm. um, so in our case here, pre-processing is uh, downsizing the image. Okay. Uh, post-processing, we don't have any in our case, but it could be like showing uh, a rectangle around the face. Um, Got it. You add something to add the original something image. To okay. the original image, mm -hmm. and the processing is uh, the actual model in itself. Got it. And the recommendation here is to uh, try to uh, do the pre-processing and the post-processing outside of your uh, main AI um, okay. module. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, main AI module typically comes as built-in or built by someone else, like a data scientist in your team. OK. Um, and also, <laughs> and you don't want to mess with that. And you don't want to mess with that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the other thing is, that earlier in the pipe, you downsize your media files mm -hmm. as a better, because it means that all your communications are, are faster yep. after. Right? Okay. All right, so that's it for the main patterns. Uh, and now we can uh, just uh, look at the uh -huh. demo. Uh, custom vision on so, the edge. Yes. Okay. So the, the source code is published, uh, the sample code is published there, so you can okay. have a look. Um, so if you have a Raspberry Pi and you have a camera and you want to recognize a banana from an apple or something else, Or right? something <laughs> else. It's a custom vision, so it's you can custom, customize yeah. it however you want. <laughs> yeah, and you'll show us actually what that means uh, yes. uh, you know, in, in uh, the Cognitive Service web page, right? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, let's go through it now, actually. Yes, good segue. So I'm uh, starting. I've opened up the Custom Vision uh, website. Okay. I've signed in, and here I've. Um, so you created a model. I've created a, a new model. Okay. Where I've uploaded pictures of apples and bananas. Okay. And really, it's as simple as uploaded pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, but when designing your model uh, or taking your pictures, mm -hmm. you should take like a bit of um, different sizes, different backgrounds, different lighting conditions. So a wide variety of conditions mm -hmm. so okay. that your model performs better. Right? Makes sense. And so here I've got bananas. But you don't have to be a coder. You don't have to be a, no. a, a data scientist as well. You just like it's are just a regular pictures. dude with pictures. With right? your phone, yeah. just take Makes pictures, sense. upload Makes them sense. here, yeah. Yeah. And, and then you're, you're and then Perfect. you click on this train button, okay, and it does all the hard work for you uh -huh. to process all these images and build an AI model out of it. Okay, and right. you already trained it before, so it tells you no, you don't need to. Exactly, nothing new. Okay, yeah. makes sense. So all the training happens in mm -hmm. the cloud, mm -hmm. and then what you can do is export this model that you've built, okay, uh, and to do the inference on a local device. Okay. So uh, what's the format for that export? Is there something special there? It's, uh, it's using TensorFlow, but okay. it's already wrapped for you. So okay. there's an export button here that I've just clicked. Uh -huh. And as of build, we've added a new um, export button directly okay. to Azure IoT Edge. Oh, so actually, you don't even have to think about the format. It's an IoT Edge compatible format. Exactly. OK. Yeah. So the way it works is you, you click on it, you select your container type, Linux okay. or Windows, you download it, and then it will download a zip package with all the code uh, ready for you. OK. So I have saved you this step. And here I'm in VS Code, mm -hmm. and I've already downloaded this uh, zip package. Right? Okay. And I've got my s and I've already developed my two custom modules okay. to read the camera uh, frames okay. and to manage uh -huh. the display. Mm -hmm. And they are, the three of them are right here, right? So okay. that's the code from the custom vision service. OK. So uh, that's the one you downloaded as a zip file, That's the one I've right? downloaded. Okay. Actually, there's a tiny modification that I've made uh, uh -huh. was to make it ARM compatible so that it can work on the Raspberry Pi. On Pi. this guy here. For do now. We, do we document that tweak for so switching? So we, we will. Uh, I'm discussing with the custom vision team to add ARM support. Um, uh, directly on the port. Directly to from the port. As, as yes. OK, makes sense. But for now, the export that you'll get is um, x64 compatible. OK, OK. Yeah. So you're, you're going back to VS Code, where you have the solution in the project for the, the module itself. And you're doing a little trick in there. And then once you've done that, you can create your module container yeah. image yeah. Yeah. and then publish that. Yeah. OK. But without any trick, using just the export from the custom vision, you could run it on your laptop or on any other 64 machine okay. out of the box. OK. Right. Um, so let's look at um, deployment manifest here. So it's as we showed in the slides. Um, I've got the edge runtime. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be deployed on my local device. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the camera capture module, mm -hmm. the display module, and the image classifier module. Okay. I also have those two routes that we were discussing. Yes. So one to send all my messages to the cloud. Okay. To upstream. Okay. And another one to send my messages from the camera capture to the display. OK, module. got it. Yeah. Makes sense. And so I've de already deployed everything. OK, so it's running, on, Raspberry it's right running on the Raspberry Pi. So you created the various containers. You publish them. You set up a, uh, that manifest actually set up in that solution. Yeah. You configure that runtime with that manifest mm -hmm. by pushing to IT up. And now it's running all these modules because it downloaded all of them. Yeah. Well, and we can okay. see that they're running right to the Azure IT Edge extension here in VS okay. Code. And so now what I'll be doing, thanks to the extension as well, is I'll start monitoring all the messages that are being sent from the device to the cloud. To IoT Hub. OK. To IoT Hub. Nice. Yes. Love it. And for now, it's saying that uh, there's a very tiny probability that it's an apple. That like there's an apple here on the table. Yeah, right? <laughs> and uh, a, a tiny probability as well that it's a banana. Got yeah. it. Yes. OK. OK. So now let's try it. Um, I'll put a banana okay. in front of uh, the camera. And here you go. Boom, so the screen blinks. The screen shows that. And, and the probability is a score one. A score one. Um, and now if you put an cloud. apple. Let's try it. So the banana is mine, right? We decided <laughs> that. <laughs> so put the apple. It's scoring. 
based on the video frame, boom, you have Apple. And nice, and, Apple. and you have the nice icon that changed the year, and the yeah. message is up in IT Hub. Yeah. So right. you just proved it works. Yeah. Well, you, you might have seen that, uh, so yeah, totally works <laughs> here. You might have seen that the perf is a bit slow. Uh, yeah. Like this, it takes about two, three seconds on this tiny Raspberry Pi to do the inference yes. of one frame. OK. Uh, but that's, that's AI workloads. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty expensive for a, CPU, a tiny CPU to yeah. run this kind well, of workload. Yeah, there's not even a GPU. There's not there's even no something GPU, that could support anything. this kind of image processing. Yeah. Device, right? So it's already pretty impressive that it works on this tiny device. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to run like um, AI workloads uh, quickly mm -hmm. on a local device, yeah. you need uh, GPUs or any kind of other hardware acceleration. Yes. Yeah. And I think at Build, we talked about Project Brainwave, right? Yes, which is super fast, amazingly yeah. fast. Uh, there is a private preview uh, open now. Yeah, what's um, the concept in two words? So the concept is to use FPGAs, uh, mm -hmm. which are dedicated chips uh, to run AI models really, really quickly. OK. Um, so you have turnarounds on inferences that are actually super, super fast. Yeah, it's like about a thousand times or even more, uh, more than a thousand times faster than, than on this device. we have here. Yeah. So yes, the seven time faster is pretty impressive. Um, one thing I want to bring up as well is that um, the code that's been running is the same. The, the building blocks is the same, meaning that the demos you've seen at Build as well that show uh, image recognition and anomaly detection using a drone flying on top of something is actually using the exact same thing you just demoed here. So what yeah. is accessible in that open source project is what can be used or what actually is used, right, in that demo we did with DJI, right? Yeah, exactly, and that's what the the, the power of Azure IT Edge is that the same workload can run everywhere. And so what we did with uh, the drone at Build, mm -hmm. so it was a M210 DJI drone. Okay. And so we mounted, a, uh, it, it's a pretty big drone, so it's um, uh, strong enough to lift um, a payload. Yep. And so we added a small payload, which was a small computer, mm -hmm. uh, NVIDIA TX2 uh, okay. board that we used uh, that has plenty of GPUs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we ran Azure IT Edge on it and deployed our AI model, which could be the same, exactly the same as that one. Okay. Um, so that gives you like uh, your AI model uh, running either on a Raspberry Pi or on your drone or mm -hmm. uh, That's everywhere. Awesome. So you guys are really mm -hmm. delivering on that promise of running the, the intelligence of the cloud at the edge on devices. That's pretty cool. Yep. Thanks, Emmanuel. Thanks for thanks coming. For Looking forward to see you and thanks for watching.